Hi everyone, welcome to another FME tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you how to integrate Google BigQuery with FME. Google BigQuery is a serverless data warehouse that allows you to query and analyze massive amounts of data, including geospatial data through BigQuery GIS. In this video, we'll show you how to get your geospatial data into Google BigQuery. This tutorial was made by Gerhard Fischel. There are three steps we're gonna go through in this tutorial. First, we're going to select our source data file, which can be a shapefile or a GeoJSON file. Then we'll set up our Google BigQuery writer and show you the new parameters. And finally, we'll load and visualize this data in BigQuery. To begin, grab a shapefile from your desktop and drag it onto your canvas in FME Workbench to start creating your workspace. You'll see that the format was auto-detected by FME based on the file extension. You can also select your coordinate system here. This is useful when a coordinate system isn't predefined and it's easy to configure in FME. Alternatively, you could have dragged the shapefile reader from here onto the canvas and configured it to read any file you have access to. Now you have a feature type that contains US state names and data in your workspace. To quickly view the content, click on the Run Just This button and display the data by clicking on the green magnifying glass. In the visual preview panel below, we have an overview of what the data looks like, including the values stored in each attribute of the source data. Next, we'll repeat the same steps for a GeoJSON file. In this case, you go ahead and inspect the data as the coordinate system here is predefined. In the visual preview, we can see that we have roads data and state polygons. We've set up our source file, and next, we'll add a Google BigQuery writer. Click anywhere on the canvas and type in BigQuery. The writer will appear and once selected, this will open up the parameters dialog window. Here we see a preset that was previously used in the parameter settings. So let's revert to FME defaults to demonstrate what this is going to look like the first time you set it up. For the credential source, we'll select a web connection. We already have one ready to go in this example, but if you don't have the connection set up, choose add web connection, and this will bring you to the Google login page, which will authenticate your Google account. Tip. Make sure that your Google account already has permission to write to a Google BigQuery. You can manage these permissions as an admin or you may have to reach out to your IT team. Once this is ready to go, select an existing Google Cloud project that you'd like to use. After that, under the Write options, we'll stick with the default Write If Empty option for table handling and select your dataset. Tip! The dataset you choose here needs to already exist in your Google Cloud project before FME can write to it. If you're not seeing any available datasets here, Create or add them to your Google Cloud project first. The next option is a number of errors allowed setting, which simply allows you to keep the translation going as long as a certain amount of errors is not exceeded. This can be useful when you're writing a large data set. For example, a table with 10 million features and with 10 errors allowed, your workspace will continue to run and load into BigQuery until those errors are exceeded. You can also keep it at the default value zero if your workspace is still in the testing and development phase and you'd like to track any bugs or failures. Lastly, the spatial type can be none, which means it won't add a geography type column to your table, or geography, which will add a geography type column with a name of your choosing to the table. All geometries of the source data will automatically be reprojected to WGS84, which is the geography representation supported by Google BigQuery and stored in the spatial column. Now that all the parameters are set up, we can add the writer. We'll keep copy from reader as the default setting for table definition. This is exactly what we need and it'll copy the schema of the source data to the tables we're writing to BigQuery. In the Select Feature Type window, we'll select both reader feature types to add to our workspace, one for each source dataset, and then connect the feature types. Click on the cogwheel icon of one of the writer feature types to see the settings in detail and the schema via the User Attributes tab. We can see that every attribute is already mapped to the BigQuery data type, but we also have the option to manually change the data types. This makes manual schema mapping very easy. Now that we've configured our writer, we're ready to run the translation and load our data into BigQuery. In the log file, we can see that the new tables are created and once the translation is successful, we can see that all 730 features have been written successfully to BigQuery. We'll switch to the BigQuery UI and take a quick look at the table we just wrote using FME. And the two new tables now appear in our demo dataset. We can also see the schema including the geography type column, and when we go to preview, we can also see the WKT representation for each feature. Lastly, you can also visualize this by clicking on the export button and select explore with GeoViz. This will open a new tab and allow us to run a query to visualize the newly populated geography features. 
Okay, and that was it. You can see how easy it is to create a workflow that loads geospatial data into Google BigQuery or BigQuery GIS. If you're interested in learning more about Google BigQuery, you can actually check this link right here. And if you're interested in learning more about FME in general, you can check this link right here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.